this is going to be one of the most important videos you watch if you own a Husqvarna Viking Onyx 25. How to kind of clean it and take care of it so it lasts the longest. So as you sew, you've probably realized that some threads are linty, some fabrics are linty like fleeces and flannels, even cottons or if, even things that you work with with batting. Underneath this throat plate area, we're going to show you how you take these two screws out, get in, clean it out, and then put everything back together. We're going to talk about the importance of putting new needles in as you do this and how often you should do this yourself. Plus, Husqvarna Viking suggests that you have your machine serviced at a local soy machine store. If you have a Husqvarna Viking store in your area, go there and then they take everything else apart and then do all the additional maintenance and oil so this machine does have metal moving parts that need lubrication and over time that lubrication does kind of dry out and get stiff and what they do is they pretty much do an oil and lube job for your sewing machine. If you do that, this machine is going to treat you right. But we suggest for our students that every three to five bobbins Okay, so that's a lot of sewing. If you really think of how long it takes to actually get through a full bobbin, some of you who are quilters or you're doing a lot of piecing, you know, blocks, triangles, squares, everything that goes together, that's a lot of stitching. You probably will find yourself after doing a quilt top to do exactly what I'm showing you. So first off, one thing that some people like to do especially if you use a lot of cotton thread, is take your scissors, snip it at the top, and pull it out the needle area. That way you're not dragging extra fluff up into your machine. If I'm using polyester thread, which is like that shinier thread, I usually don't do that. I'll often pull the other direction down just because there's not as much lint. Go ahead and take out your bobbin. So remove your bobbin. And let's take out and off the foot and the needle. Then that way if you haven't changed your needle lately, you haven't remembered when the last time it was that you changed your needle, let's just go ahead and take it out and say you're putting a new needle in. All right, next. This little tool that came with your machine is the perfect screwdriver to get and loosen these screws on the throat plate. Now once you kind of get it started, you can take your fingers, give them a little twirl, and this will release these short screws. So it doesn't take much to kind of get in and twist these to release the throat plate. So then it's just going to come straight up. We have one more piece that we're going to take out of here, but before we do it, what I want to do is talk to you that you don't want to blow into this. So don't go <gasps> and then think you're going to be blowing the lint that you see out of the way. And we're not using canned air. Canned air is going to push more of it in and in, and that's going to make it worse later. When your service person opens this up, they will find a ball of lint in here and they'll usually hand it back to you and tell you don't do that. All right, so you do have a brush that came with your machine. So this is on the other end of your seam ripper. Um, sometimes I use something like this, which is like a, uh, a wool dust it. This is like the Swiffer for sewing machines. So I'll show you how this works in a second too. Next, this is your bobbin case. So you can actually just kind of give it a little twist and lift it up and out. And I'm going to show you the trick for getting it back in as you are finished cleaning it out. So a lot of your lint is going to kind of gather in this area. So you can go ahead and brush that all out. This you can just get in there and just like poof in it just magically disappears. I love it. If you've got a Q-tip, do that. You can take old makeup brushes. Whatever it takes, just get the lint out of your machine. Now, one of the things that they do do is right in the center here, and I'm noticing it's actually, being that this is a brand new machine, a little bit on the dark side. So I'm going to actually just kind of wipe a little bit of the excess off. Okay, that's not normally there, but there is a place where they do put a little oil down in this area and just let them do that at your regular maintenance. But if you do want to put any sewing machine oil, that will be one of the places that you can do just that. That's why there's a hole right in the middle that is in that place. So here's what we do to put it all back together. So after you get it all cleaned out, you want to find where this little uh, point is and kind of point it towards the back of the machine. 
and there's a little kind of nub. You can kind of see that right there. This nub needs to be up against the spring. See where it is? So if you get it in sideways, things are not going to be lined up. So as you kind of poke this kind of down and underneath this arm, you are getting that to kind of sit back in. So everything is back in and flush. So you might have to kind of kind of give it a little wiggle. And once it sits down in that area, it should have a little wiggle room of its own. And then you can see that part going right up against that spring. If that's not there, do not put the top on yet. It needs to be perfectly smooth all the way around that big silver um, opening around it. Then you know that everything is going to come back safely together. So go ahead. Put the throw plate back on, put those little screws back on. You don't have to get them, I mean, you need to get them tight, but you don't have to like over tighten those. So it's really easy to get in there on a regular basis. So kind of keep an eye on like how many bobbins did you actually go through? I know if you're doing lots of color changes, that's hard to kind of manage. But if you hear your machine kind of growling a little bit, it's not as smooth as it used to be or maybe you're sewing and you're breaking threads often. Yes, changing needles are gonna be ideal place to start, but also a quick clean out underneath is going to probably be the solution that you're looking for. Push your foot on, nice and straight, flat side to the back for doing needle changes, and then make sure that needle gets all the way to the highest position before you tighten it in place. And don't over tighten this screw. That can be a little detrimental long term, just a nice firm tighten so it obviously doesn't fall out. Make sure you're putting your bobbin in with the thread coming off the left side. So that's the right way to put it in. And if you're unsure or can't remember, remember there's a picture on your th uh, little door here to remind you which way that bobbin thread needs to come off and over. Then if you are, un make sure that everything is looking good. Do a little test sample and make sure that everything is as smooth as it should be. And I bet you're gonna hear a big difference once you clean out any of the lint. So once again, every year have your sewing machine store in your area do your annual service and then every three to five bobbins clean out down below and this machine will love you forever if you're looking for our other free vi video tutorials on this machine we're putting links in the description below where you can binge watch from the beginning and learn everything about this beautiful machine from a to z